Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode two of the what is it called? Process of Sail the Seas. And basically this video I'm gonna be explaining um my experience with testing the game since I tested it from the first episode where I was like adding updates and stuff. I'm gonna be showing some new cards that are added into the game. I'm gonna be telling you my ideas for like archetypes and stuff. And then, I I think that's it, I don't know, I know. But um, first, let's get into how the experience was when I tested it. So, I tested it, and I'm not going to lie, it was actually pretty bad. It was, but it was a bad with potential. And that's like, you know, that's, that's, that's not where you want to be, but that's where you're going to be when you're making a TCG. So... There, there's a lot of things that can be improved, like the um, the currency, or like the mana, or whatever you want to call it, the harpoon mechanic, and I, th there, I think there's something else, but then there's there's something else, I think it's, um, actually I think it's just the, the gold mechanic or whatever, oh wait, no, I know what it is, but I don't know how to like do that, but basically yeah, there's like a few things, and another thing is that the game just felt like super slow. Like, some things are fun when they're slow, but this isn't one of them. And it just felt too slow, and it made the game just, like, so boring. And, um, I felt like I couldn't, like, do anything. Like, I, when, I, when I was testing it, I was using the, um, the Pirate Knight deck, and I felt like I just couldn't do anything. Like, I don't, I don't know why. Just, like, you know, like, couldn't like do anything and it was like really slow so there's there's definitely improvements that need to be made but besides that it actually wasn't too bad everything like the the most general of sail the seas was pretty good but like it's just kind of like the well i mean would you look at that it's just kind of like the super important parts that i need to like improve on but um so yeah i gotta make a few more improvements onto the rules and everything but Let's look into these new cards. So I think episode one, or the last one, I don't even know. So I said that I was going to add, like, spell cards, and I did. But I wasn't going to call them spells, and I didn't. So they're called relics. So this is a relic card. I put card because if I just put relic, then call from the deep. That's not That's not really, like, a relic. I, don't, I mean, I'm... I'm pretty sure a relic is like some sort of treasure item or whatever. So I, I, you know, I don't, I just put cards so it sounds more better. But, um, basically what, so this is a relic card. There's, I think there's three types of relics. There's neutral, which basically means you play it. Once it's used, you discard it. That's like the most basic one. And then there's also equips, which is pretty much like equipment. So this is um the Huntsman Flintlock, plus 150 power to one of your uh, creatures while they are attacking. And then there's another one. They're not called permanents. I actually changed them when I was testing. I forgot to just change it on this card though. But they're going to be called timers. And basically, there's like there should, it should say timer, and then it should say how many turns this card stays on your ship for. So Flag of Courage can stay on your ship for two turns until it's discarded. So there's like somewhat like permanent cards, like whatever. But um, yeah. And then actually this up here, because this is really cool. So the this is a creature card, Beast of the Reef. And you can see it's just got like a round like um, currency cost or whatever. This one's got like a star. It's because this actually cost Aura, which was like a second currency. But I'm th I think I'm going to get rid of Aura. I think I'm just going to keep um, just gold. Everything is going to cost the same currency, gold. But I'm going to keep the star, though, because it's a pretty easy indicator that this is a relic and that this is a creature just by looking at that. My dog's barking. But um, this is actually a really interesting card. This is a... Uh, used for this new card which is the strongest creature in the game and it goes to stats it's got 2000 power but um anyway so the next card <clears throat> i think i'm definitely going to be i mean i'm going to be keeping um both these cards but 
treasure cards. These are like win conditions. I don't know if I'm going to be changing these around a little bit. But basically, um, it starts at level 1, and you have to do 1,500, or, you know, actually, hold on, let me, let me uh, explain this again. So, treasure cards are, like, win conditions for your deck. And some of them are different than, uh, well, all of them are actually different from others. So, this treasure card, Treasure of Beings, this is supposed to be best for the Coral archetype, because... It's um it's all about dealing a lot of damage with creatures and the coral archetype is all about placing a bunch of powerful creatures. So that's what this one is. I'm definitely gonna be changing these numbers though. But so your treasure starts at level one and you have to do well for the treasure of beings, you have to do one thousand five hundred damage to get it to level two, and then two thousand two hundred damage to get it to level three. And then once you do three thousand damage it technically goes to level 4, which means that you win the game. So then, boom! You max level your treasure, and you win. The second win condition in the game, or like the second way to win, is by just sinking your opponent's ship. And that's actually what the, the Pirate Knight deck is best for. And the thing is, is that you don't need a treasure card for that. Any deck can win by that strategy. So the... The Pirate Knight deck's uh, treasure is so extra, you don't actually really need it. But, um, like, the most of its cards improve its cannon damage, so the cannons can kill your opponent's ship faster. And each player's ship has, like, 5,000 health. So they have a lot of health, but, like, the cannons, over time, they just get so powerful. I also made some updates to the cannons. Um, cannons don't have their own cards, they're, like... They're like built into the ship cards. I gotta I gotta update the ship cards, but um yeah, the Pirate Knight Castle is gonna have like three cannons that do like three hundred and fifty damage each, and you have to spend gold to like shoot them. So like the cannons are built into the ships. So I think that's actually pretty cool because I feel like the um individual cannon cards were kind of like I don't know, they just didn't really work. But um that's kind of like uh the cards and stuff but um before we get into my ideas for like different archetypes and everything i'm just gonna like go over the like main thing i gotta do so the main thing i have to do is i have to just improve some of the rules the the harpoon mechanic i gotta improve that if i'm even gonna keep it that is i gotta improve the um the currency, that's the biggest one. I gotta definitely improve that, because that's such a huge rule in the game. And I just gotta make it, like... I don't have to do this, but I, I wanna do this. I kinda wanna make it more fast-paced, a little bit more intense. So it's, you know, more intriguing. It's more fun, like, you know what I mean? So, I'm definitely gonna be making those improvements, and I'll maybe you'll see some in episode 3, I don't really know. But anyway... Let's get to my ideas part, because this is actually my, like, favorite part. And so right now, the, so these are the archetypes I have, like, planned. So each set, because I thought of the sets, right? Each set is going to have five archetypes in it. And set one has the Pirate Knight, the Coral Reef, the Skeletal. Then it has the um, the Toxic Waste, which is a... Pretty cool archetype. I really like this one because um, it has George the Rogue, if you know him from Match Bowers. It's going to have him in there, and I'm going to make him like a really strong card when paired with like um, a Relic card or whatever, and that's going to be like really cool. And then <clears throat> this last one, I actually really like, I don't know what to call it, but basically it's like based around like a bunch of vampires. And the reason why it's vampires is because the vampires would actually heal your ship and that's like i mean not all like not only is that really good because you know you don't want your ship to get destroyed because um i think there, there was repairs before where you can actually heal your ship by repairing it you can't do that anymore i got rid of that so healing your ship is actually like pretty darn important now but um healing your ship is really good especially if you go up against like a um <clears throat> a pirate knight deck Healing your ship is definitely going to be annoying for them. But um, not just that, but like the treasure of the vampire deck, whatever it's going to be called. 
is um, going to basically level up by how much health you heal to your ship and stuff. So not only are you healing, preventing your opponent from winning in the base game win condition, but you're also leveling up your treasure at the same exact time, which I feel like is super cool. I also thought of already like a few cards for it. So the vampire archetype, I think that's probably going to be like my favorite one. But um, yeah, so those are all the ones for set one. And then when we go on to set two, if there's ever going to be a set two, which I think there would, but um, the set two is going to have the volcanic archetype. It's going to have the winter waters archetype, which is like ice. And then it's going to have the skylands, which is like flying stuff. And then that's it. But the other two, where there should be two more new archetypes, instead of making two different new ones, those two, like, I guess, like, spots in the set are going to be used for cards to support the cards from set one, like the archetypes for set one. So there will be, like, Pirate Knight, Skeletal cards in there there's going to be the vampire like some vampire cards in there to like in like add more to the um variety of those archetypes so like if you like playing with those ones you know you can just like use the cards from set two and put them in to the um, archetypes from set one and stuff and then it'll basically just keep on continuing that so i feel like that's a pretty good idea and that's where i'm going for right now and i'm just testing with um the Coral Reef and the Pirate Knight because I'm actually changing the skeletal strategy to um, getting cards from your discard pile because right now it's just spamming a ton of creatures but that's actually going to be the volcanic so I'm going to I'm just like I'm just not using that one right now but um that's going to do it for this one hope you guys enjoyed again like the first videos of this aren't going to be as interesting as like the ones later on I just really want to get these rules done because the rules are like I mean, I know some people have fun making the rules. Me, personally, I kind of find it annoying because, like, I don't know. It's just kind of, like, it gets kind of stressful sometimes because, like, it can't, like, really think of anything. But I'm not going to let that stop me. I'm going to keep on going, and <laughs> I'm going to try to get better cards than this. Look, it's literally on the back of a cannon card. But, um, you like, comment, and subscribe to see more. That's it.